Hi, I'm Dan, and I have a problem. How do you make something more awesome and badass? You add fire and power cords. That's what we're gonna do today. How am I gonna do this project? I want something that is inspired by a Slayer concert I went to once. They, they really seem to know what to do with fire. But I also want hints of Mad Max Fury Road. When my daughter turned one month old, I thought it was a great idea to make her the Duke Warrior and give her a flamethrowing guitar. She hasn't learned to use it yet, that'll come later. But something in that neighborhood. Luckily, I also got a present from my friend Thomas in the UK, known from his YouTube channel, Mellow Labs. He's awesome, and I have a hunch that I know what this is gonna be, and I think it's gonna be inspirational. Yeah, I got something in the mail today. And it's from the UK. Thomas here, from Mellow Labs. Hi. Made for me. Hi. Are we up? Is he showing? Are we yeah. Oh, good. Oh, oh wow, it's a, it's a co-host. I'm so excited. Do I just go into it? I just go into it. I like the hazard. Uh, tape. Yeah. I've been now, waiting for this for, for months, for like over a month now. So happy it's not broken. It doesn't look broken. First thing I see is a big gear ratio on the back. That makes me excited. And there's a counter, just like your YouTube subscriber counters. <laughs> under warrant or under warranty, void if removed. <laughs> under the warranty. That's one. that's very. Pro this is very professional product design. Eight. Oh, 10, 9, oh, eight. It stops on each integer. At five, four. Three, two, one. Yeah! <laughs> nice! Come on. You don't need to be scared. Right, let me, um, oh my dear, I'm loud. <laughs> Thomas made this for me. It's, you know how he did an episode on his counter for how many subscribers he has? That's how many subscribers I have right now. And it's every 10 out. subscribers, it does a special thing. I'm gonna show you the special thing that it does right now. Four, three, two, one, and... <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah, right, look. yeah I'm, I'm that's like, Here's great. a letter for you, Let's Dan's let... wife. I hope you can forgive me for my sense of humor. I just wanted to make your husband happy and support his channel. That's really... Thanks, Thomas. I'm pretty sure I know how I'm gonna do this project now. What? No, 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 no. So another project with my wife's full approval. Now that I have that, and now that I have inspiration from Thomas, I'm thinking I can use propane canisters because they're about the same size as walkway lights. And if I want to greet myself when I'm coming home, what better way than to have walkway lights? There's three pairs of two that shoot fire into the air, and then I just have power cords of my choosing play from somewhere else. I think I can do that. Couple internet searches later, and I am good to go. All right, I think this can be too interesting not to try and record it from four cameras. This is the first test. Three, two, one. Hmm. Unfortunately, it appears that arc is not hot enough to ignite the gas, so we're gonna give it a little help here. Three, two, one. That's better. That's good. That's all good. That's all really good. We did a good job. I'm not gonna lie, I, I tested this first because I didn't want to be disappointed, but I'm still kind of glowing, and this is why. Ha-ha! <laughs> hey! Woohoo! Ha-ha! <laughs> all right. I think the principle works, but I need a way to control six of these. I like using ESP32 chips because you can program them with the Arduino interface and there's even a library called ESP now where you have one master chip that talks to six helper chips we're progressive here six voluntary helper chips one chip can send information over wi-fi telling six different chips what to do i think that's going to be what i have to do so i need to make a proto board and figure out how to you know program them and make it all work this is my test jig I originally thought, oh, I'll just use something metal. Metal conducts electricity. So instead, I'm gonna use this. What's cool about this is I made a bunch of little spacers so I can raise it or lower it and make the spark gap wider or narrower. So here we go, let's test the spark. Wow, that's loud. Nope, that didn't work. Is there not enough air mixing with these things? That's why I made these adjustable doodads. Let's move it up a little bit. So that was a problem before. 
I'm guessing that the air fuel mixture is always going to be the same. No, it's not. That, no, there's, there's liquid propane and then it turns into gas up here. And what happens every time you <laughs> then the liquid to fill in the space turns into gas. And to do that, what's it need? It needs heat, it needs energy. So the thing gets colder. So the gas is going to be colder. So the actual amount of gas and the energy in the gas can be much less than when it's warm. So I should probably find the best air fuel mixture. All right, let's try it. Ah, ah that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I got one working. There's no way I'm going to wire up and solder five more of these proto boards this year. They're called, they're huge. My wiring really stinks. Like here, look at Thomas's wiring. It's like some fancy European city subway that I aspire to go to someday and then brag about when I get home on Instagram. Now look at mine. It's horrible. It's like the Boston MTA. What I can do instead is just design it up on my computer, upload it to some factory in China and then get 20 of the boards for very inexpensive and by the time they come back to me, I probably could have done one of these on my own. Five to seven business days later, ta-da! Aren't they nice? They're so nice. It's time for me to assemble this thing. Let's walk you through it. These are the boards I had made in China. This is an ESP32 chip that I program. That's a mechanical relay, flyback diode, a transistor, and a resistor. 12 volts in and 12 volts out to the solenoid and the arc generator an adjustable voltage inverter, and some capacitors, which I'm gonna need because this thing, I think, throws out big electromagnetic pulses. Super quick montage. I've got it, it's not pretty. Definitely not pretty if you look at the underside. Ugh, ugh. I ruined a lot of traces with it, but let's try if I hit the button remotely. So the light on the left will be propane, the red light will be um, the igniter. Nice. It's much better than this, this mess. Recall I want these to look like walkway lights. They work, but they don't look like walkway lights. So I have to cat up some stuff, I'm not good at that, and make some enclosures and housing for the electronics and the spark generator and yada yada yada. And then I'll probably use this as a voiceover when I eventually do that. I cleaned out a corner of my shop. I found multiple dead animals there because I haven't investigated that place in a bit. But I made a relatively safe place where I can test the timings on these. How long does the arc go? How long is the propane expelled? I got some, some good measurements. I even made this little graph thing so I could see like how tall and how wide it was. And, and then it just degenerated into just awesomeness. Time to start assembling these things. Maybe I'll do a time lapse of this. Those are the tungsten electrodes. That's the top. That's the spark generator. That's a solenoid valve. That's PTFE tape. That's the housing. Those are heat set insects. And I'm putting it all together and look at that and wiring that and putting that in there. Ta da. This is the point of this project that was based on being badass and awesome where it starts feeling boring to me. And if I produce a video well, it, it won't be. But it, it's at the point where I've done three of these things and I'm really happy with them and I have to do three more and I'm not interested in doing that at all. This is frustrating. How do real YouTubers like my friend Thomas or Colin Furs handle it when this happens? Well, Dan, so you're making a flamethrower system as you walk to the shed, face recognition, fantastic. You may hear that you're struggling with it. Don't worry, there's sometimes I'm building stuff, I can't get it to work. Just either take a break, come back to it, you will get there soon. Go for it, Dan. Okay, that's pretty awesome. We're gonna do that one. We're gonna do that. That's pretty... <laughs> Thanks, Thomas and Colin first. <laughs> sometimes it's important to take a break from what you would consider progress and like reboot and be like, why did I want to do this again? I have one of these, so I'm. why not wire up the other two? just so I could like play Mary had a little lamb on them or, or do something to kind of get myself pumped and back into this project.
Number one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, six, I'm watching you, six. Five weeks later, it looked like I was making such great progress, but I ran into a huge slew of problems. So these things have just been incredibly problematic for me. I've ordered 25 of them. I only need six working ones. That's how many I've replaced. So the little arc generator, as I call it, because I like to feel like Iron Man, I thought I'd put it right next to here originally. And what happens when it's right next to here? This fires, the chip dies. It's still running though. When does this fire? When there's burning propane shooting into the air. So now there's burning propane shooting into the air for a malfunctioning chip. Uh, my general poor understanding of electricity has been really problematic for this project. I use really thin wires to run to these things that require up to like four amps when they go. I mean, they were undervolted the entire time. And then I'd, I'd be like, doo, 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 doo. I'm, I'm gonna set a bunch of them off. Now I'm pulling up to like eight or 12 amps. That obviously doesn't work. It makes the igniters get upset. They fart out, they stop working, they make the whole chip stop working. That wasn't fun. I put capacitors in there because apparently you're supposed to smooth out voltage spikes. And I thought these things again would cause a lot of voltage spikes, which they did. But instead, when I turned off my power supply, I'd turn it on and it wouldn't even shoot out a supply because it's like, hey dummy, you've got a bunch of loaded capacitors in there. So I'd have to unplug them and, and discharge them. And I think real electronics, you don't have to do that. The last one's not on me, but it did take me the longest to figure out. Apparently the ESP now library has a broadcast to all function that I was using so that the master can broadcast to all of the voluntary helper chips. But you know what? If you're broadcasting to more than four, it makes its brain hurt and it just stops. But that one, that one's not on me. That's on you, Rui Santos. I'm calling you out. I really need to finish this thing because Thomas has a very strict release schedule and I need to make them look like walkway lights and not like propane canisters. You should never breathe paint. Wear a respirator and a helmet because you just, you don't know if you're gonna need the helmet. I think this looks like a walkway light. You tell me if it looks like a walkway light. It totally looks like a walkway light. <laughs> so I just painted one of these. Uh, it's really close. The end part, I need to add which I think is just gonna be me walking up the walkway and probably teaching my wife or daughter how to hit the buttons, right? Which is terrifying, but. It's really late, but I'm coming up on a deadline. So I need to make sure all of these painted ones work before I put them in the front yard and weird out all my neighbors. Come on guys, we can do this. We can get, we can do this. How are we gonna do like game day stuff if you can't do this? All right, number one, two, ah, two, two, thank you, three. All right, cool. One, two, three. Now with power cords. All right, now we need to put you in the front yard. <laughs> front yard. Nothing suspicious here, nothing suspicious at all. These are just walkway lights. Yeah, they're wireless, but they're powered with 12 volts right now. I, I have a fix for that in a future episode. These look totally unassuming. They don't look like bombs anymore, which is great. And, uh, yeah, yeah, walkway lights. Walkway lights in suburbia. <laughs> awesome. All right, first test. Work is so mundane. I wanna feel more awesome, more badass. We got it, honey. Yeah. Freaking got it. Dan, nobody wants to hear you flirting with your wife during the daytime with the sun up and no music playing. Make it dark, make the fire brighter, and play power chords. All right, we'll do that. We'll, we'll do power chords. Thanks, honey, though. Let's be clear, this project is not done. As originally imagined, it would have machine vision and a neural network identifying where I am because I don't want it to think somebody else is awesome and badass. I also don't want to burn up children or animals in the neighborhood. I especially want to thank Thomas from Mello Labs. He is the first person I ever actually met on the internet that I got to actually become friends with. I'm incredibly grateful for his patronage, his very kind gift and everyone watching this, please tune in because he's pretty awesome and there'll be plenty more of this. <laughs> awesome and badass. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks for watching the second episode of Gears Code and Fire. I'm out. <laughs>